Casimir Cascasuo came so close. He came this close. And he did it despite massive absences from the Laval Rockets lineup last week. And we're going to get into who was missing and why momentarily, don't worry. But what is it that Kaz almost accomplished? Coming off the All-Star break, the Laval Rocket kicked off a five-game road trip last week with a back-to-back weekend series on Friday and Saturday in Toronto against the Marlies. If you remember, prior to the break, Laval was really starting to struggle again to stay in the win column. They'd lost more games than they had won in their past four or five games. And so they were looking to get off to a good start in Toronto against a tough divisional opponent. Needless to say, that didn't happen on Friday night. In fact, they were absolutely dominated by the Marlies on Friday night, losing 6-1. to one. Jakob Dobish was getting his fourth consecutive start in net, and I can't say that the uh, responsibility for this loss falls on young Dobish's shoulders. The entire team, top to bottom, every position, simply wasn't good enough. Mitchell Stevens scored the only goal of the night for the Laval Rocket, but it was actually a couple of former Canadians and Rocket players who made the difference for Toronto in this game. Former Canadians forward Logan Shaw, you remember him? Well, he had a hat trick on this night. And Joe Blandisi, who played for a short period of time for the Laval Rocket, he got himself a Gordie Howe hat trick on the night, uh, scoring a goal, an assist, and dropping the gloves with defenseman Logan Mayu. This game, in fact, from top to bottom was very physical. It was There was a lot of animosity on the ice between these two teams. And frustrations for Laval were obviously starting to boil over. So, Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock start time, Casimir Cascasuo gets tapped for the start between the pipes for Laval. The key here is that this is the first time that he would be facing his former team. He used to play for the Toronto Marlies, and he was going to be facing them in their barn, a place he was well acquainted with. So emotions obviously probably running quite high for Cascasuo in this game. And a lot of responsibility on his shoulders coming off such a devastating loss the night before. Casimir Cascasuo came so close. He came this close to a shutout, but just fell short. Thanks in no part to Roni Hirvinen, who scored his very first goal of the season uh, very late in the second period. So it was starting to look like perhaps Cascasuo would blank his former team. Uh, but despite the fact that he didn't quite get the shutout, Laval put up a very impressive 7-1 to beatdown on the Toronto Marlies on Saturday afternoon. That leaves Cascasuo still undefeated on the season, 5-0 and since he signed his PTO contract with the Laval Rocket. And more importantly, it got Laval back in the win column, and it is something they are going to need to try to build on. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you exactly how they might be able to start doing that this week. But first... Do you recall a few minutes ago when I said this? And he did it despite massive absences from the Laval Rockets lineup. That's right. Casimir Cascasuo not only helped backstop Laval to a big win on Saturday, the entire team rallied and did it with a lot of absences. Well, first off, Brenna Zignac was absent from both games last week because, as you'll recall, He has been recalled to the Montreal Canadiens following the signing of his two-year, two-way NHL contract. He is still Laval's points leader, and so his absence is certainly felt up front for the Rocket. Emil Heineman left Friday night's game midway through the game with an injury, and he did not dress for Saturday's game, so there was another big piece of your firepower up front who was missing on Saturday. Just moments prior to puck drop on Saturday afternoon, due to Raphael Harvey Pinard leaving the Canadiens game that was played earlier in the day, He left with an injury, and it was obvious that it was going to be a long-term injury. 
Moments before puck drop in Toronto on Saturday, Joshua Waugh was plucked by the Montreal Canadiens on recall, and so there was another big name out of the forward core for J.F. Uhl. As you got into the game on Saturday, second period also saw Laval take some hits to their bench with Justin Barron and Matthias Norlander, two strong parts of your back end, both left the game with injury. Now, fortunately, Justin Barron was able to eventually return to the game in the third period. However, Matthias Norlander did not. So Laval put up a 7-1 victory after getting completely trampled by Toronto the night before, and they did it with a lot of key players missing from their lineup. Now, it is still possible that we'll see another defenseman get recalled to Montreal, depending on the status of Jordan Harris. Good news was that Caden Gooley was able to play for the Canadians on Tuesday night, but still no word on Jordan Harris, so it's possible that someone like Justin Barron could get recalled this week by Montreal. Uh, With Brendan Gallagher coming back from his suspension this week, Uh, there is a slight possibility that we could see a forward get returned to Laval, but we still don't know what the coaching staff is going to choose to do. So splitting the weekend series with Toronto, not a bad result for the Laval Rocket to kick off this five-game road trip. That win on Saturday puts them at 20-19, 4-2 on the season, but it still leaves them outside of a playoff position. They are in sixth place in the North Division. In fact, they're tied for sixth place with Utica at the moment. With such a terrible performance on Friday night uh, and really a lot of key prospects missing from the lineup on Saturday. I'm not going to do a complete prospect breakdown per se like I normally do, but I am going to hand out a standout star award because I've got to give props to Logan Mayu for once again making his presence felt and known, both with his opponents and on the score sheet. In that performance on Saturday afternoon, Logan Mayu had another three-point game tallying a goal and two assists. He finished the game with a plus three rating, and he led the team with five shots on goal. Okay, so I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that Laval was really going to need to take that win and build on it, and there might be a way for them to do that this week. So let's dig into that a little bit. It's not going to be easy. They have the rest of this road trip to finish this week. But I said they're not playing on Wednesday, and it's a five-game road trip. You know what that means? They have a 3-3 three and three this weekend, which means they will play three games in the course of three days. It's always a tough part of the AHL schedule. Three and threes are exhausting for teams. And so by the time they get to Sunday's game, they're going to be pretty tired. Uh, but we'll see what they can do. They start out on Friday night in Hartford playing the Wolf Pack. That's the New York Rangers AHL affiliate. Saturday night, they then head to Pennsylvania to take on the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. That's the Pittsburgh Penguins AHL affiliate. And they finish up the road trip and the weekend with a Sunday afternoon matinee in Bridgeport taking on the Islanders, who are, of course, the New York Islanders AHL affiliate. It's Friday night against Hartford. This is a tough team to play against. Uh, They've been a solid and strong Atlantic Division opponent. And it's also where former captain Alex Belzeal is playing. And we know that Belzeal certainly made a show of things when he visited Laval with Hartford earlier in the season. So that's going to be a tough one. If they can manage to get a win on Friday against Hartford, that might set them up well for the weekend. Uh, Things don't get easier on Saturday when they head to Wilkes-Barre. The Penguins are actually almost 10 points ahead of Laval in the standings, uh, another strong Atlantic Division team. Uh, And again, we see some familiar faces with former captain Xavier Ouellette and Peter Abandonado, both in the lineup for Wilkes-Barre Scranton. So a tough task for them there, where they might find a little bit of redemption, but they can't afford to sit back is on Sunday when they play Bridgeport. Bridgeport, uh, to be completely honest, has had a very tough season. Their their points are in the 30s on the season. They are at the bottom of the Atlantic Division standings, and if there's a, a chance for them to really grasp a hold of a game uh, and take control of things, it might be on Sunday against the Islanders. The trouble is, that's their last game of the 3-3, three and three, so fatigue is going to be a factor. 
Lots of things to consider and lots of possibilities for the Laval rocket this week. And if you want to keep informed on all of the progress of the rocket and the Habs prospects who are playing there, well, be sure that you tap the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hey, check out our game recaps uh, after every Laval game. You can find us over at the Hockey News' Montreal Canadiens team site. That's at THN.com slash Montreal. Myself and my colleague Chris cover the Laval rocket for the Hockey News Montreal, so be sure to check out our game recaps over there. Now, one guy Laval fans haven't had the pleasure of seeing play uh, for the Rocket this season is Uri Slavkovsky. Uh, despite the fact that even at the beginning of the season, there were some myself included, who thought he could use some time in the AHL to work on his development. But boy, over the last month or so, Slavkovsky is starting to really come into his own and he's starting to very much be noticeable for the Montreal Canadiens in good ways. And in fact, it's making people kind of sit up and and question is Uri Slavkovsky really starting to break out? And some are already starting to speculate and wonder, is he really going to be uh, the best of his 2022 draft class, living up to that first overall selection? While it might be too early to really answer that yet, Rick and Michael did tackle this topic and kind of take a look at his trajectory and the rise of Uri Slavkovsky on our most recent episode of the Canadians Connection podcast. And boy, let me tell you, if you happen to miss that, you're going to want to watch this video right here, and I'll see you back here again next week. 